New cars are only for the rich. This sounds like some headline from a clickbait news article, but unfortunately it isn't. And this is becoming more and more the truth. The truth is the average American has been priced out of the new car market. And nowadays with the average new car payment coming in at $716 per month, with others coming in over $1,000 per month, the fact is as of right now, new cars, and in some cases even used cars, have become harder and harder to obtain for the average American and the average borrower. And for some lower income earners and poor credit borrowers, buying a car has become a nearly impossible task. And when it comes down to it, these factors that are playing their role in the car market, some of these factors are temporary while others aren't. And unfortunately, these don't all have to do with the roller coaster of a car market we experienced in 2021. Last week, the Federal Reserve increased interest rates for the 10th consecutive time, which brings rate to a level that we haven't seen since the Great Recession in 2008. This has increased the cost of borrowing money for everyone, but is particularly impactful for anybody who's wanting to buy a house or a car. With the average new interest rate currently hovering between 6 and 7% and the average used car rate at 10 to 11%, buying a car has become difficult for everyone, but especially for subprime borrowers. According to Cox Automotive, in 2018, subprime borrowers, so borrowers with poor credit, made up 14% of new vehicle sales, while deep prime, so borrowers with really bad credit, made up 10% of car buyers. Today, subprime borrowers only make up 6% of new car sales, while deep subprime only make up 2%. This is a direct result of the changing car market and the fact that cars have simply become out of reach for these types of borrowers. With subprime and deep subprime interest rates ranging from 10 to 13.5% for new cars and 17.5 to 20.5% for used, these types of borrowers simply cannot afford a car right now. I mean 20.5% interest for a used car, that is absolutely mind boggling. The fact is, the way the interest rates are today, for the average American with average income levels, the only way you can comfortably afford a car is if you either A, pay for that car in cash, or B, have excellent credit, and thus you're able to take advantage of below average interest rates. But for anyone who doesn't fall into one of those two categories, it has become extremely difficult to be able to afford a car. Interest rates play a crucial role when it comes to the affordability of the average car, and it truly can take an affordable car and turn it into an out of reach one for the average consumer. But unfortunately, interest rates aren't the only issue. The other issue is the fact that automakers are keeping inventory artificially low. During the pandemic, automakers struggled to keep inventory up due to the chip shortage. As a result, across the country, dealership lots were empty and cars were hard to come by. But that isn't really the problem anymore. In 2022, new car dealership inventory across the United States increased by 50% from the start of the year to the end of the year. And dealerships across the country had about 1.7 million new vehicle units available to buy, which was a lot higher than we saw in 2021 and 2020 during the pandemic and during these chip shortages. In fact, companies like General Motors, Tesla, Ford, Stellantis, and more have seen production return to pretty close to normal. The fact is automakers have the ability to ramp up production and thus return inventory to where it was at in 2019 pre-pandemic. The problem though is that automakers don't really want this to happen and this has in turn resulted in scheduled downtime. GM was the most recent company to do this with their Fort Wayne production plant, but they aren't expecting to be the last company to do this this year. And what this essentially means is that automakers are making the conscious decision to not produce cars for in some cases weeks at a time in order to keep production lower and inventory at bay. By pumping out less cars but charging more for those cars, they're actually able to make more money off of each individual car that they sell. And this is quite a big change from where the car market was pre-pandemic, because historically, especially here in the United States, many automakers took the approach of manufacturing as many cars as possible and basically making the volume play. Let's sell a ton of cars at a cheaper price and in turn we'll make a lot of money. But over the last couple of years, there has been a real shift with the automotive industry and it's taking a very different approach approach. Instead, they're saying, we're actually going to produce less cars, we're going to sell them at a higher price, and as a result, we'll make about the same amount of money with less effort. This is a really big deal, and it's quite a shift from where we used to be with the car market. Pre-pandemic, you could go to one of dozens of different dealerships in your city, you could choose from hundreds of different makes, models, colors, and trim levels, and you could choose the perfect car for you. And chances are, you could probably negotiate a pretty good price on that car because there were so many different cars to choose from. But that power of negotiation, that is no longer in the hands of the consumer and it's now beginning to shift into the hands of the dealership simply because of the fact that inventory is harder to come by. 
and this is in large part manufactured by automakers. And this brings me to my third and probably the most important point, which is just the fact that the cost of cars have gone up and this isn't due to market trends and it's not something that is temporary. I've talked about this a lot on my channel, so I'll keep this point brief, but the reality is affordable cars are disappearing and manufacturer after manufacturer are cutting their cheapest vehicles from their lineup. Chevy was the most recent manufacturer to do this with the Chevy Bolt. Luxury cars typically have a higher margin than economical ones. In fact, some of the most profitable cars on a per car basis are some of the most luxurious brands in the world, including BMW, Ferrari, and Mercedes. The practical economical car is disappearing, and even normal everyday brands are beginning to put a high emphasis on high price tag luxurious ones. Look at the Jeep, for example, in the Grand Wagoneer. This SUV has a starting price of $86,000, and a Suburban, which starts at fifty-seven. dollars but once you buy things like engine upgrades, interior options, and towing packages, you can very easily exceed $100,000 after tax, title, and license. The point is, is that these normal everyday brands like Toyota, Ford, Chevy, they are ditching their cheaper cars in favor of more expensive ones. And with the exception of a few economical makes and models, and whenever I say a few, I mean a very select few, cars have just gone up in price. The average price of a new car, while down about 1% in recent months, is still nearing 50,000, which is simply out of reach for the average person. The good news is, is that some of these factors should change, hopefully sooner than later. For example, interest rates. It is expected that interest rate hikes have come to an end, and as a result, the cost to borrow money should begin to go down. And while I don't know if 0% interest rates are in the cards anytime soon, even a 1% or 2% decline can make a big difference when it comes to affordability. And secondly is the fact that the car market is very, very competitive. Right now, there are a lot of cars to choose from and none of them are affordable. I'd be really curious to see how this fight for luxury market share ends up shaking out for automakers. And I wouldn't be surprised if one or two automakers decided to specifically target that market. For example, there's been rumors for years now that Tesla's gonna release a sub $25,000 electric vehicle which is something that I think this market desperately needs. I guess what I'm trying to say is that while automakers are fighting for luxury market share, there is an entire segment of buyers that are simply being left out entirely, and that is the buyer that's looking for that sub $25,000 car. There's a lot that could change economically in the next year or two, and I'm really curious to see that if a recession does occur, and if the luxury market ends up tanking, which could be the result if we are in a recession, if some of these automakers will begin to backpedal and will once again begin to offer more economical, affordable options. But the unfortunate reality is that until it happens, car prices are going to remain high. And while we of course can blame things like the pandemic for causing this major issue that we're in now, the pandemic isn't the only reason. And a lot of the blame should be placed on automakers and their shift to more luxurious, high margin cars at the expense of the average consumer. Cars are simply becoming out of reach and the finger doesn't need to be pointed at the car market as a whole, but instead it needs to be pointed at the automaker. But like always, you guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, comments, if you have anything to add, I would love to hear it. So make sure to leave a comment down below. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next video.